I'm deeply grateful to UN Global Compact Network, Malaysia and Brunei, and its supporting sponsors and partners for the kind invitation. It is a great honor and privilege to deliver this very special closing keynote on the occasion of the Go ESG ASEAN Corporate Sustainability Virtual Summit 2020. I take this opportunity to congratulate you on this significant summit, which comes at a critical time, not only for ASEAN businesses, but also for our ongoing efforts to raise ambition in support of the Sustainable Development Goals. Ladies and gentlemen, ASEAN is globally important. Together, ASEAN's 10 member states form an economic powerhouse. Synonymous with the global trade, it is the fourth largest exporting region in the world, trailing only the European Union, North America, and China. The region has dramatically outpaced the rest of the world on growth in GDP per capita since the late 1970s, averaging 5.1% per annum. And this would not have been possible if not for the private sector. ASEAN is a pivotal consumer market of the future. Already, ASEAN is a home to 227 of the world's largest companies with this economy, en route to becoming the fourth largest by 2050, as projected by the World Bank. Whether or not that happens, there is consensus that the region will grow rapidly, both in terms of its economic might and its influence on world trade. However, the recent health crisis has shut down the economy and impacted business in what was already a very challenging global economy. Our collective future hangs in the balance. There are many good things being done, many new innovations are being rolled out. The question is, what will corporate ASEAN do? Albert Einstein, the famous German mathematician and physicist, succinctly remarked that we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. Confronted with the scale of today's societal and ecological challenges, Einstein's adage is a timely for ASEAN business leaders. With more than two centuries of enjoying industrialization and exponential growth in development that came with it, it is not breaking news that we have currently surpassed human and planetary boundaries. And the pandemic has called into question if business was indeed doing enough. The challenge staring down at ASEAN business is how they can help with the regional economic recovery, not to return to business as usual, but to reinvent for a sustainable and resilient future. Many have said that this is an opportunity suggesting that there might be other occasions. But what if it was an ultimatum for mankind? Perhaps it would do a lot of good for us to ponder on this for a while, but not too long, because Mother Nature has just served us a red card. Ladies and gentlemen, Five years on 
since the historic launch of the SDGs in September 2015, the world is not progressing at the pace and scale needed to achieve the SDGs. As a matter of fact, as reported in the UN SDG Progress Report 2020, it can be concluded that ASEAN countries are unlikely to meet any of the 17 goals by 2030. We need to act with urgency. We need decisive action. And what we need most above all else is a bold and visionary leadership to enable solutions that create wide scale and deep impact to the economy. With just 10 years to go, an ambitious global effort is on the way to deliver the 2030 promise by mobilizing more governments, civil society, businesses, and calling on all people to make the global goals their own. It calls for accelerating sustainable solutions to all the world's biggest challenges, ranging from poverty and gender to climate change, inequality, and closing the finance gap. Perhaps one such solution can be found in value-based or shared value principles. It upholds that business prosperity should be shared instead of coming at the expense of the broader communities where companies operate. It is a business model that will accelerate the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs. Shared value is not social responsibility, philanthropy, or sustainability, but a proven way for companies to achieve economic success. It supports the SDGs to create positive impact for society, environment, finance, and for all parties involved. It is characterized by the principle, doing well and doing good are not mutually exclusive. Meaning financial success does not need to come at the expense of society or the environment. And creating a positive impact on society and the environment does not need to come at the expense of profit. The evidence of success is there if there are any doubters. Companies are responding in different ways to cope in the aftermath. Adidas Group partnered with Nobel laureate Mohamed Yanousi's Grameen Bank to manufacture a low-cost shoe for the poor in Bangladesh. BMW Guggenheim Lab is addressing issues on the SDG Goal 11, sustainable cities and communities by tackling contemporary urban, urban life through programs and public discourse. Clothing retailer H&M, for example, has switched its orders for garments to face masks. In Malaysia, as I have been made to understand, Sarawak Energy was the first Malaysian company to become a signatory of the business ambition for 1.5 degrees Celsius campaign, thus creating value for everyone. It has also demonstrated great corporate leadership by collaborating with Global Compact Malaysia and Brunei to publish a toolkit for sustainable SMEs, a commendable effort to mobilize sustainability actors for SDG Goal 17, Partnership for the Goals. As if to acknowledge my advocacy of shared values, global player Petronas has just recently issued 
on due statement of purpose in response to a world that yearns for a path towards a more sustainable future. Determined and resolute in its purpose, it has become Asia's first oil company to commit to zero net carbon by 2050. Another milestone for SDG Goal 13, climate action. There are 17 sustainable development goals, SDGs, which are interlinked in that the success of one sets up the path for others. And it recognizes the key role of business in achieving targets. It is for this reason that business must embrace the strategy of shared value to enhance corporate competitiveness and profitability while working on social and environmental issues. Despite substantial acclaim for synergy of integrating the SDGs and the concept of shared value, the linkage between the SDGs and shared value is underappreciated. But it is evidently clear the companies that operate based on some interpretation of a shared value have not only performed well in these times of crisis, but have proven to be more resilient. As ASEAN business reopens and shifts to reimagining their business models, it is imperative to note that the future is absolutely about shared value and there is no other option because for once we are seeing globally and nationally the alignment of communities and business having to come together and fight a common issue. To achieve the future we want, it requires ASEAN business leaders to prioritize their business focus, to innovate and co-create through the lens of what is within their control, what they can be doing to ensure alignment with the greater population. The long term is not separate from the short term. We are in a unique situation where there is a social and economic crisis, where we all must work collaboratively and contribute to solving the urgent problems before they fester into unrecoverable tragedies. And that really means some of our various short-term objectives have to be sacrificed in order to ensure the community comes out of thriving better and more resilient. The economic recovery from COVID-19 may not be easy, but a revisit of the shared value strategies can make the recovery not only possible, but also sustainable. I take this opportunity to once again congratulate the organizer, sponsors, and partners of the Go ESG ASEAN Corporate Virtual Summit 2020 and its ongoing effort to promote the business of recovering better, a resilient and sustainable ASEAN by design. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Your Excellency, for that thought-provoking speech. Uh, there are definitely many considerations as we end the year and start a new one very soon under very challenging conditions, striking the balance of doing the right thing and being profitable at the same time. So thank you again for being with us for the last two days. Uh, this event would not have been possible uh, without the support of our collaborators for our energy, uh, Petronas, CMM, Willstech, and our partners, Health Consultancy Services, SME, Corp Malaysia, Martrade, and other supporting organizations. CDP, GRI, UNSCAP, and regional global compact networks in Indonesia, Philippines, Singapore, and Thailand. With that, thank you again for being with us the last two days. Stay safe.